patients with their LATS and erectile dysfunctions, if they are coming to my clinic de novo, uh, that means they are never have been treated for their LATS. I'm starting a Tadalafi 5 milligram daily dose and see how is improvement of erectile function and also uh, his LATS. If they were treated with the a, a, with the alpha blocker previously, I'm either or combinating starting PD5 inhibitors on the daily basis and or uh, is quitting the PD5 inhibitors uh, five milligrams and stopping after three months and continuing with alpha blockers. Or I'm suggesting them to try stop alpha blocker after three months of treatment, combination treatment, and leaving them only on the PD-5 inhibitors. Yeah, concerning the treatment with these, the, these combo patients with the, what, just one pill, Tadalafil, five milligrams once a day, I have some experience, some very good experience. The question is, uh, it's very interesting because uh, before the launch or before the, it was the approval of this, uh, this drug to, B, to LUTs and BPH, we noticed in our patients with ED that still have LUTs that they were improving. That's why we, I, it's, it's curious because, and after, we knew that there is also this uh, common pit pathophysiologic links. Now we understand why they are getting better. So my experience is good uh, and uh, it's good for the patient. Uh, he doesn't have to suffer with the side effects of the, of the other drugs that we are using to treat uh, LUTs connected to BPH. So I think it's going to be in the next uh, couple of years another good option for treating these combo patients. The patient that it's not a naive patient, so he's taking a medication to his LUTs, BPH, namely an alpha blocker, he's doing okay, he's a cheap medication probably, but he also has ED. So uh, the most important thing here is to explain to his patient that this condition is common, the two conditions are common, and, that, and then we can explain all the alternatives of treatment. Uh, now it's going to be Let's see which alpha blocker is, because there are different side, prof side effects profile from the alpha blockers. And we can present him with the PD-5 inhibitor, tell him the advantages, the advantages, the disadvantages. And as I usually say, the last word is from the patient. But our job here is to really explain the good, side, the, the good effects, the side effects, the adverse events and see what the patient really needs. We just need to explain it, uh, or fully explain the situation. For that kind of patient, if he's doing all, all right with alpha blocker concerning his LUTs, but, his ED, but he has ED, I would probably suggest to change it for a PD-5 inhibitor, mainly telalafil 5 milligrams once a day. We have uh, selective and non-selective alpha blockers. Of course, the selective alpha blockers work very well uh, concerning uh, the concerning uh, lower urinary tract uh, track, um, symptoms. But the fact is, let's go to the most uh, specific one, silodosine. Yeah, we have a lot, more than 20% of uh, not retrograde ejaculation, we don't use the term anymore, but uh, failed emission. That's a problem for the patient. So, in fact, when we change from this kind of alpha blocker to a PD-5 inhibitor, of course, we're gonna solve all these side effects. But for a so much stronger uh, alpha blocker like silodosine, probably the patient is going to feel a little bit different. This not, is not meaning that it's going to get worse, but it's going to feel some differences concerning his micturation. Anyway, I think it's a question of time, because concerning efficacy, the studies are made, the studies are done, and the efficacy is the same between alpha blockers and the PD-5 inhibitors concerning what we usually measure in LUTs and BPH. It is quite common for me to see patients with LATS and erective dysfunction and I was uh, using in the past a combination of PD-5 inhibitors for erective dysfunction and alpha blocker selecting one usually for the uh, LUTs. Nowadays uh, when there is a combination of, pro of uh, 
problem, and especially in people who come firstly with erectile dysfunction and then they find out we have also LATS, I tend to give only one drug, that is the Tadalafil once a day, that is available now everywhere in the world, and I can tell you that the patient is very happy because uh, uh, they can solve with one drug two different problems, and I think this is very convenient for the patient. What I tend to do when I have a patient that come to my office already with uh, treatment for LUTs with alpha blocker and then you need to have a treatment for erectile dysfunction is to discuss the, the various options. Uh, in Italy we have a situation where sometimes there is a difference in pricing and the cost of the drugs may, can make difference in each different patient. So I tend to discuss, uh, of course in my mind, uh, it, uh, it is better to give only one drug, but uh, sometimes you have a patient that is happy about uh, the results of uh, uh, the treatment for uh, LATS, and so if uh, he's happy also to go for on-demand PD-5, I tend to leave uh, the alpha block and give an on-demand PD-5. Then I explained him that there is a new treatment uh, possibility that is to treat with one pill both conditions. If he is bothered mainly by the BPH symptoms, the large symptoms, maybe I'll try with an alpha blocker or whatever. But I encourage him to treat and, and to go for the, uh, let's say, one pill for those conditions. That is quite prevalent and the patient can, will benefit from this uh, treatment. I'm absolutely convinced that these uh, PD-5 inhibitors are doing well on, on symptomatology of, 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 of LATS, so uh, no one neurologist will uh, in some way have any, uh, let's say, doubt about the, the beneficial effect of the PD-5 inhibitors. They are absolutely happy because well, for, with one pill they can uh, be fixed uh, both uh, problems. And I did an early, an early study uh, just after the launch of the first uh, oral PD-5 inhibitors and tried and, and, and watched and confirmed the uh, spontaneous reports from uh, people saying that they were relieving of the, the, the lower urinary tract symptoms when taking PD-5 inhibitors. So I um, confirmed that and, and so since the very beginning I'm using PD-5 inhibitors for treating both conditions. When people come uh, in my office and they have both uh, uh, LUTs and erectile dysfunction, uh, I uh, first uh, evaluate uh, the case. Uh, either patient is treated, either is not treated for the LUTs. If there is a uh, patient is not treated for the LUTs, and uh, if they have uh, both uh, pathology, I propose them very often uh, to take uh, daily Tadalafil, uh, because I think it's a good solution if patient uh, is good, but of course it costs uh, little money. If patients don't want uh, to have uh, so many uh, sexual intercourse, and if he has no uh, lot of money, I propose them both uh, phytotherapy and uh, uh, on-demand PD-5. It depends on the case, and it depends on the wish uh, of patients uh, about frequency of uh, uh, sexual intercourse. Uh, for the naive patient, uh, let's say in my clinic, each patient who complain about LUTs, I also, also ask about sexual activity. For me it's a rule and it's a part of the urogenital system and the pelvic floor and that's I think very important to know. Uh, if they are both complain and they want to uh, treat the ED as well, then I advise them to uh, take a PD-5 inhibitor again as Tadalafil 5 mg a day because it, according to the studies that we already have and uh, in, at least in Europe, Tadalafil once a day is approved for BPH treatment as well. Uh, that's unwilling of the patient also to pay the price uh, for that treatment. In case they do, uh, are not sexually active and don't complain about that problem, then <coughs> I choose for the alpha blockers. In case that they notice after the use for alpha blocker 
problem with erection or with ejaculation, that's also something that we will need to be aware of. What we prescribe the patient as a treatment for the PDBH have a chance of causing them sexual dysfunctions. And we need to give them uh, to pay attention for those issues. In case that they have a ED as a after uh, alpha blocker treatment, I advise them to, to change to an uh, PD5 inhibitor as well. Well, it depends on which alpha blockers the agent and uh, these patients are. If they are on tamsulosine or psilocin, both are not fine for our sexual health, and I switch them to alfusosine. And uh, in addition, I put them on daily dosing, provided they can afford uh, that drug. And the best combination, or the mostly used combination, what we are doing currently is, uh, is daily dosing with uh, tadalafil plus alfusosine if they are not satisfied with the outcome of monotherapy. The majority of them are on alpha blockers and, uh, and those who would like to have an improvement of the erectile function as well, they, I uh, switch them to a PD-5 inhibitor, daily dosing Tadalafil. And then I uh, make a an, uh, an try of uh, three months that I withdraw the alpha blocking agent and then the patient is deciding after the three months whether he would go uh, with two drugs or it's one drug, it's, uh, it's enough uh, in this regard, it's a Tadalafil. There are anecdotal cases uh, becoming a, a very good responders of those who are really non-responders to an, an uh, daily dosing of Tartalafil. If you are adding either alfusosin or you can also add an statin, which works in some of these guys uh, quite well. But I would say there are anecdotal cases and not a big series about that. In my practice, the treatment of lower urinary tracts related to BPH is incredibly common and it's usually driven to a large extent by coverage and cost. So although it is approved in Canada to use Cialis, 5 milligrams a day for men who have BPH or who have BPH and ED, the cost is greater than alpha blockers. So typically what I will do for most men is we'll start them on an alpha blocker. And usually I use a selective alpha blocker, a drug like, uh, you know, uh, Flomax, which is Tamsulosin, or Zetral Alfusosin, uh, or Psilidocin. Uh, and the cost of those is a fraction of what daily Cialis would be, probably one quarter. The men who have both ED and BPH I actually now start them on five milligrams of Cialis because if ED is a major problem for them or if they were on an alpha blocker for their BPH and developed erectile dysfunction, we can salvage both conditions with one drug, which is really nice. The difference, of course, is that the cost is higher, but for many men, that additional incremental cost is worth it. For some people, they can't afford it and it's not an option, and then we look at alternatives. But for the guys in which the cost is not uh, a deal breaker, then it's a very nice option. What we've learned is that uh, approximately three decades ago, in the United States alone, there was about a half million transurethral resections of the prostate. This is the surgical procedure that was performed. And in the, in the ensuing few decades, there was a medicalization where we've used alpha, alpha blockers, 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, and more, most recently, a low dose of a Tadalafil, which is a PD-5 inhibitor. This has been approved in the United States for the treatment of lower inner tract symptoms. Now, this can be tried on alone, but typically men who develop LUTs in their early 50s to 60s have problems with erections. So it makes sense if uh, to kill a, two birds with one stone to give one medication. And if patients respond, this is a wonderful option for treatment where the patients take a low dose, either 2.5 or 5 milligrams of Cialis every night and treat both issues.